So here's the end of my game. I played the Pierce defense. My opponent just promoted and I have to make a decision. Should I take with the king or with the rook? I almost went with the wrong one. And yes, it's not the same thing if you take with the king or with the rook. Now, let me show you the game from the very beginning. Of course, my opponent plays d4, g6. It looks like we're going to play a king's Indian defense. But after e4, we transposed into the peers defense. Those of you who have been with me from the beginning, you know that we already have everything covered as far as King's Indian defense and peers defense. Now, Bishop F4, of course, they want to do this aggressive setup. It's not exactly the 150 attack, but in our head, we know already anything that indicates being aggressive. By white, we're going to play C6, B5, and get ready for opposite side castling attack. Now, the other trick or the other tip that I gave you on lesson number 70 is that we're not going to castle, guys. When I first started playing this opening, I would castle right away, and it was a very straightforward plan for the white pieces. Go after my king, checkmate, that's it. So we don't castle. We develop the queen side because most likely our opponent is going to castle there. And this is exactly how the game went. So at this point, I just went knight to b6, getting ready to transfer my pieces towards that king, I know back on that lesson I told you queen a5, knight b6 after, knight c4, and if the bishop took, we'll get to open this file. However, guys, what I gave you back then was good enough to get an interesting game, but I have my lines a little bit more better prepared for tournament practice, and I have decided over the time of studying this opening to play like this. So again, we had talked about queen a5, let's say g4, Maybe six, h4, and then we were looking for something like this. Yes, we get doubled pawns, but we also get semi-open file. Now, again, in this game, I went knight b6. Then my opponent goes bishop a6, and I've told you this many, many, many times. I don't care that the queen comes to h6 because, again, I'm not castling over there. So now I decided to play queen to c7, and I'm thinking, worst case scenario, if this attack becomes serious, I could just do bishop b7 or bishop d7 and castle to the opposite side or to the queen side so g4 then pawn to b4 remember we had like four very good lessons on opposite side castling attack and for the most part whoever makes contact first should be the winner because we get the initiative so knight b1 a5 h4 and now of course bishop e6 not only that i want the pawn but i want to provoke this next move pawn to b3 and now i just made contact there was one specific lesson on how to attack this pawn formation and we learned that we need to make contact with the rook pawn so after a4 we got h5 of course i opened up the file and then my rook goes to the seventh rank don't forget just like i told you on our latest lesson the powerful knight in itself is not enough here the rook on the open file is not enough we need to use that to penetrate and attack so after rook a2 we got pawn takes pawn takes again this is becoming uh not safe at all to castle but i'm probably going to even go do king d7 king c8 and so on so queen e3 my opponent is realizing i got there first my king is in the center it's not castled over here and after queen a7 i'm getting ready for possible rook c2, queen a2, and I was so dying to do the sacrifice. But my opponent played g5, my knight goes to h5, and I know, you might be thinking, why didn't you go to the queen side? Well, I need at least this knight to help me out on the king side. And guys, this is not something I just came up with during the game. After playing this opening so many times, reviewing game played by other, by other players, I have seen this knight h5 making uh, being played, right? So knight h5 d5 i take and this to me was a little bit surprising because now i was thinking rook takes king takes and i was thinking oh if i could bring the rook to the c file and by doing this they're helping me open up lines towards that king if you look at the evaluation at by now it's 277 for black so after bishop b5 even better the king goes out the way and the rook is now ready to come over evaluation 426 so my opponent takes, and this is a very critical moment, or at least for me, it was a very interesting moment in the game. Why? Well, I told you before, I really wanted to make this work. 
And I almost did it. Here with this move, it gave me the final excuse. I'm like, okay, even if this fails, they already gave me a rook here. So I'll be getting probably a couple pawns and they only got a knight. But then I remembered what I've been repeating to you guys over and over and over. Let's be patient. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. In this case, I'm thinking, do I really need to sacrifice? What if I prepare something better? I've told you, if you calculate, you have candidate moves, like one candidate move, two candidate moves. If I calculate one and the result is not clear, I don't see something concrete, I might as well not do it. So after calculating king takes, queen a2, king d3, it wasn't so clear. Pawn takes, I looked at knight c4, it wasn't so clear. I almost went for it because knight c4 seemed powerful, but they had queen f4 check getting away from that. So I said, you know what? Let me look into this. If I take that rook, can they, can they attack me? Can they get me in trouble? I realized that was not going to be the case. So I said, you know what? Let me take the rook and I'm still threatening everything else on the queen side. So I took, my opponent put me in check and as I had anticipated, my king is safe on g7. And they don't have all the time in the world to attack me because I'm going to go for their king. So after king g7, Bishop d3, notice how the pieces are going back to defend because this is in the air. And now again, if we look at the evaluation, 8.45, we're completely winning, but we have to be careful. So I needed to look for a plan to convert this. I looked at rook f8, it makes sense, but then I might be helping them. So I decided to go rook a1, looking at a possible sacrifice and then checkmate threats. So g6, again, I took a moment here to, to, to verify they don't have any checks, any surprises, and that was the case. So no checks. So I went for take, then checkmate threat. King goes away, but I realized the only escape squares were b2 and d2. And guys, of course, before I went with rook takes, even before I went rook a1, I had already considered knight c4. And the engine was giving this knight c4 for a long time, but... I wasn't sure until now. So knight c4, threatening checkmate one more time, pawn takes, and now I had considered check, check, and then take, but I realized this one is more powerful. And then finally, after pawn takes, pawn c3. And guys, checkmate no matter what. The only thing is my opponent could have some counterplay. Now, I did consider what if they go queen g5, but of course we just hide. There's no more check. So my opponent went with h8, promotion, last resource. And here, my first impression was like, okay, doesn't matter which one, I'm already winning. And I almost played this move. If you look at the footage that I provided, I, it took me like six, seven minutes. And I mean, probably could have made the decision sooner, but I knew I had the time and I wanted to not rush myself. So the thing here is that if I just take with the queen, this is, look, immediately is going to be a draw due to perpetual check. They could go check and I was calculating this line and I was like, well, this one doesn't work because I could just um, continue to hide, right? And if they do something like this, I have check, check, and checkmate. So I was happy with that. But the thing with this move is that they have queen h6. And then if I go here, bishop b5. If I go here, check. And here I could even lose the game. Look, now this is completely winning, right? And then there was another line, I think it was something like this, where I figured, well, they don't have any more checks. But look at this move, guys. Look at bishop a6. I don't have checkmate either. And if I take, no one is guarding e7. So all of this is in the air. And for that reason, I finally said, you know what? I'm going to take with the rook. And there's no way they can stop me from delivering checkmate. Now, only check is over here. I'm going to hide. And then... I'm safe with the rook and the bishop defending the king. So even at this point, we could easily blow a game like this. I've done it in the past. 